Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HC. This is video 24, and today we're talking about MSEG modulation. So MSEG stands for Multi-Stage Envelope Generator. We have eight of these available, and basically the way to think about these are a very user-definable envelope or a function or something kind of like that that we can loop, we can do all sorts of cool stuff with to modulate just about whatever we want to. So for this example, let's go to an init preset as always. Underneath the first oscillator, let's add a filter. So let's go VCF1, and this one's fine. Let's bring the cutoff down. And here on the modulation, let's click none and let's go to MSEG one. And you'll see that we have one through eight that we can use, but we'll, let's use the first one for now. So once we click this here and let's give us a modulation amount, something like that. So once we start adding modulation, it's gonna automatically go to this window for us. And we can always go to different stuff and we can always find our way back to the MSEG one through eight. Now, since we have eight down here at the bottom, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is gonna to correspond to all eight of them. So hopefully that makes somewhat of sense. So the first thing that we should really talk about for this MSEG here is basically the timing, right? So how do we, how are we going to time this thing? So for now, let's double click this background here. We're going to get into other stuff like this a little bit later. However, let's do something kind of interesting here. So for each unit here, let's give, give us some points. We can alt and left click and add some new ones here. So I'm just going to add them on each of these columns here and kind of just do something kind of like this here. And then this last one, let's maybe go down like that. And then to straighten these curves, we can always left click once and then it'll highlight and let go to make these all linear to make it a little bit more uh, audible, I suppose, or makes makes more sense. And what we can do now is grab this little, actually, we should add another one here and bring this actually maybe over to eight, something like that. Okay. So basically we have this kind of point here, right? And then let's bring this down one last one here and double click this. So what we can do is we could, let's say we can right click this point here let's go loop end and let's drag this first one here to loop start so we have a loop going on here so it sounds like this then make actually make this one the last one here let's go to right click and loop end So it's basically like an LFO in a triangle shape makes sense hopefully so far. So what we want to listen for is the click track and going along with this shape here. So by default, it's going to come and come on quarters. So let's take a listen to that. And we also have a choice of 16th. Now, like, hopefully this makes sense so far that it's going to be attached to our BPM of our session here. So we're, we're syncing it to our BPM here. So now we're on 16th. And then last but not least for the syncing, we have notes. So you notice how every single bar is basically the red point here hitting on one of these points here. So hopefully that makes sense there. So let's go to the next one, which is going to be in seconds. So this is going to be in absolute time, right? And keep in mind, this is kind of strange at first if you're kind of coming into this MSEC thing. Each one of these bars here, so from one to two, is going to be by default four seconds long. So let's take a listen to that. And you can kind of count it in your head as well. So we're going to start here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four four, one, and so on and so forth. So for example, you're, you're thinking, might be thinking, okay, four seconds. Okay. I got that. That makes sense. That's cool. But I don't want four seconds for each bar. Maybe I want one second for each one. And what you have to do is you're going to have to reach for these knobs down here. So we, we have attack loop and release. So these are going to be, think of these as time scaling knobs, right? So if we want everything to be in one second, we're going to have to move these attacks to a value of two. So let's go two here. Same for the loops, just kind of get in the practice of doing that. And then we have all these set as two. So let's start it. One, 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 or you can go one, two, three, four, however you want to count, but rest assured, this is going to be in second time. So from bar one or from this vertical bar to the next one and so on and so forth is going to be one seconds time. Okay. 
Next thing to move on here, we have this preset here. So we're going to talk about poly here in a second. But so this preset menu, we can load and we can save different presets of our envelopes. Something that I noticed myself is we have this init here that comes factory and I click this here. And this is not necessarily the init preset that I see when I first load up the synth. And I was like, that's kind of weird. So then I made a fresh instance of the synthesizer and saved the init mseg myself. So we can always start with our own. So if you are experiencing that as well, I highly recommend to do that. All you have to do is once you load it up, you can right click this here and then you can hit save or, you know, call it whatever you want to. And there's also sorts of different presets here that you can access quickly here, or you can go into this menu here. Depends on how you want to do it. Also, there's like copy and paste and stuff like that for a little bit of a faster workflow. So I thought I'd mention that first. So we have a basic envelope here and let's go to 16. So it's a little bit faster. Okay, so now we're on poly, right? So let's put on some release here for our notes. Something kind of like that. Okay, so what's going to happen? So once I hit a note, it's going to sustain at this little triangle, right? And if I hit more notes, since it's in poly, each one of these notes that I add to this is going to add its own envelope. So you hear how the first note I'm hitting is sustaining at this tonality? And once I add more notes, they're going to get their own envelopes. So that's what poly does here. And we can move on to single right over here. And single is basically this envelope re-triggers after all the notes are released. So we hold down a note. It stays at sustain. We let go. It finishes the release stage. And now once we play a note again, it'll re-trigger, it'll re-fire that envelope. Next up or last up, we have mono. So this basically basically re-triggers this envelope or this MSEG with each different note. And that's pretty much those different modes here. So like I said here, this attack, a loop and release are the time scaling and then velocity is basically scaling the output based on input velocity for your notes. So. Now let's get into the editor. This is kind of the cool part here. So let's go open editor. And the first thing that you should be aware of is these three little buttons down over here on the left hand side. So basically, if we click this first one here, it's going to be default by the one in the center there. So this one is going to move individual points, right? So if you have this point here, we can move this around and it's just going to move kind of how we would imagine it to. However, if we select this one over here and then we start moving this, it's going to move everything after it. So that's the difference there. And then we have this one here, which moves points vertically, but it's kind of weird. Sometimes it can kind of get stuck. So I kind of tend to not really use this mode myself. I usually kind of like staying in this very first one here because I can always move points individually if I like to. And if I think, okay, cool, I like this decay, but I want everything else to be further then that's when I would switch to this one here. I like the sustain kind of where it's at here and maybe just move step over. I like the decay something kind of like that. So some navigation stuff. If we have a little bit of extra space here and we want to fill up our screen with our shape here, we can just double click our background and it's going to fill it up completely. We can zoom by holding left click and going up and down. So vertically, we can kind of see what we want to do and really zoom in, zoom out kind of how, however we want, and then double click the background to go to the back. Now, this little triangle up here is going to be our sustain point. <laughs> And we're holding here, we're holding, it's sustaining, and we're letting go. It's also the, the uh, it works with the looping, right? So if we have this here, and we can drag this all the way to the next point here, and it's going to create a loop. We can do it that way, or we can right click this point here and say, maybe this is going to be the loop start, or, you know, maybe add one here by alt left clicking and say, right click here, and this is going to be the loop start. And now we're going to get a bar like that. And it's going to loop there. Now, if we want to remove it, we can just drag it back to the left and or drag it to the right. And then it's just going to be this triangle, which is, again, our sustain point. So something very cool about being in this big view here is that the bottom panel over here, we have all of our sources, right? So we see filter one, mod source one, which is our cutoff, right? We can see our modulation depth and we can always change this if we'd like to. And we can see it changing here at the top. And then we have the value that we can type in specifically if we want to. Very cool. And we can also delete it if we don't want it. And we can add stuff here. So we can add a new one here, click to assign, and you can basically assign it from this window, which is also really cool. So for example, we can go to maybe the filter one, mod source two, something kind of like that, really whatever we want to do and whatever we want to affect. 
So let's go ahead and delete this for now. We don't really need it. So we just have our cutoff make things somewhat simple. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully we kind of are getting a little bit comfortable with this interface. Now we have these curves here and we always want to change these curves. It's not too difficult. We highlight over the curve, select it and move it down or up to make different types of curves like that and just let it go and it's going to hold its shape. Something that's kind of different, a little bit unusual, I suppose, is to reset it to normal. Generally, you would think maybe like an alt button or something kind of like that. However, it's a little bit different where we just left click once and then let go and it's going to put it back to a linear curve. So keep that in mind if you're kind of just moving things around, maybe click here and you don't want to move and you let it go and it just goes back to default. That's kind of why that's happening there. <laughs> So that's the basics of how this thing works. We do have a lot of menus if we right click here. And at first this can look kind of daunting. There's a lot of different stuff here. So it's actually easier than you think, right? So we have copy. I think we all know what copy does, copy and paste stuff, obviously. But some of these are actually really cool. So the half size, double size and upside down pretty much makes sense, right? So if we like this envelope here and we're like, this is cool. However, I'd like to make this half the size. You click half size and it's gonna do just that. We can undo that we can go double size, make it twice as long, we can do that, or we can turn it upside down on its head and we have this weird looking thing here. Also, we have some of these unit snappings and value snapping. So if you're kind of moving these points around and it's kind of like it's too snappy, this is where you want to go in this menu and say unit snap off, which is going to these different units, these vertical bars here, or we can go to value snap off, which is going to be the value of, of the node. So if we have both of these off, it kind of functions as a free drawing kind of thing. Now we can do we can do like unit snap three, four, six, eight. And at first that can be kind of confusing, right? So the way to think about this is let's say we're on unit snap three and put this in the center here, this point right over here. Now, if we're going to go to the next step here, we're going to get this dot here and go one, two, and three. So there's going to be three moves that we need to do if it's on unit snap three. If we go to four, right, go to this bar here, one, two, three, and four. So that's basically the unit snap and the value snap is basically the vertical stuff. And this is going to be the values that you'd want to, uh, to pick here. And down over here, we have quantize to snap. So if you kind of have some weird stuff that's not really quantized, so if we turned off all these here, kind of did weird unethical things. It's kind of just off time, something kind of like this. And then we go to, let's say, unit snap of three and value snap of 12. And then we can go to like quantize to snap. It's going to snap those to the values that we set. Pretty uh, straightforward here. And then unit spacing, this one is kind of interesting. It's kind of weird at first, like unit spacing. What does that mean exactly? And basically, if we select this here, what happens, you're, you might think, okay, my envelope is really tiny now. So what happens is every single point that we had, if you notice, we zoom out here a little bit here, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So if we do that same command here, unit spacing, we're going to be ending on the unit six. So basically, each point gets its own column or its own unit. Unit's kind of a strange name, <laughs> to be honest with you. I think column might have been a little bit more uh, making sense, I suppose. However, it is what it is. And then we have even spacing too. If we want all of these to be even spaced, we can right click here and even space them. So they all have even spacing. Pretty self-explanatory. And the last step over here is gonna be this pointer on course fine. This kind of like motion thing, kind of going through the envelope, how we want to see it. Or if we don't want it all, we can turn it off and kind of just guess wherever it is in the uh, in the synth. If you want to play in hard mode, you, <laughs> you're you more, more than likely able to do exactly that. And then we have lock here at the very bottom here. If we want to lock this, this envelope here and change presets or something like that, we can lock this parameter, which is a very cool feature. So yeah, that's the MSEG in a nutshell. It's kind of just a very advanced envelope or modulation source, very user definable, and a lot of tools that you can do to customize whatever it is you want to do with it. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.